Good morning. I'm uh, very glad to be here uh, at, this <coughs> at this conference. And uh, I will be talking about this archaeological infrastructure in Norway that we have been working on for many years now and having a new project starting just uh, or running just now. In Norway, we have um, 18 counties and five archaeological museum districts. And uh, these are based in, uh, you see the, the counties, and then on the right side, you see the museum districts. And each of these museums, the Arctic University of Norway in Tromsø is responsible for the, for the excavations in the northernmost part. The NTNU University Museum in Trondheim uh, has uh, the middle Norway. University Museum of Bergen has the west coast. Stavanger Archaeological Museum, University of Stavanger is having this uh, Rogaland County in the southwest. And we in Oslo at the Museum of Cultural History, University of Oslo, we are then responsible for all the excavations prehistoric excavations in uh, our part of Norway. We have uh, since 2000 had an increasing number of excavations documented in the Swedish system intrasis. Uh, it's, uh, it's important to have all this excavation documentation gathered and made available together. Uh, we are lucky to have no private commercial contract archaeology in Norway, and that makes it much more um, easy to achieve such a thing. And uh, then in 2011, we also decided that intrasis should be um, de facto standard, and we developed common templates for the excavations by the university museums. Uh, nevertheless, there is so far no common data repository for all kinds of um, documentation. And uh, the Directorate for Cultural Heritage, they are receiving excavation reports on paper or PDF uh, to a greater extent. And uh, they are then, of course, also responsible for the National Registry for Sites and Monuments. Uh, the university museums in Norway cooperate in, in MUSIT. Uh, we started that cooperation as a project in the 1990s. And uh, this has now developed into a permanent organization since 2007. Uh, MUSIT is then the cooperative IT organization of the five Norwegian university museums and uh, is responsible for development and maintenance of the databases. Uh, MUSIT also works on natural sciences and archaeology is of course the largest database in the humanities. So if we look at the situation in Oslo, we have this different... Um, this one is there, uh, Pointer? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the different agents, uh, people sending information to our uh, museum. Um, it's uh, KHM, that is us up there in the, in the corner, uh, here. It's the Museum of Maritime, uh, the um, Norwegian Maritime Museum. NICU is an organization doing medieval excavation. Then the counties uh, do uh, surveys and also some excavations. Institute of Archaeology. <clears throat> and then, of course, the public will find um, uh, uh, artifacts and send to the museum, like the metal detector um, people. They will do stray finds and send to the museums. All this is then coming in and being uh, registered in the MUSIT databases as far as it is uh, archaeological artifacts. Uh, we have uh, the artifact magazines and the topographical archive with all the archaeological documentation, which can be accessed on, on request. Uh, just now we are running one project uh, uh, digitizing all the archive for one of our counties and making it available. And then uh, the rest of this will then have an online availability through unimus.no and also the excavation reports uh, at the duo that we know, we know, which we'll see some more about later. The project that we started in uh, April 2018 is uh, added, uh, Archaeological Digital Excavation Documentation is the name of the project. And the goals for this is then to establish a set of core metadata for the archaeological excavations, to describe the data flow between the counties, the directorate, uh, for cultural heritage and the museums. We will implement a repository, migrate existing data, create an open data web interface, and this will make it possible to do queries across single projects. 
we will then aim at including the data sets into a single searchable information system. Uh, we have, uh, with uh, since 2011, documented in Intrasys and a few earlier also digitally documented excavations, we have about uh, uh, 1,500 uh, projects and uh, in Oslo we have about half of these. Uh, to the right here is an example of the 3D documentation that we do to a greater and a greater extent at our excavations. This is what an excavation data set in the Intrasys can uh, look like. And we are to also to a greater and greater extent using uh, uh, iPads and doing all of the documentation more and more digitally. Uh, digitally. The added project will give information be included in the MUSIT uh, infrastructure. Uh, MUSIT uh, databases already has systems for artifacts reports going to a MUSIT archive, photo and drawings going to the MUSIT media, and uh, datings go to a module for uh, analysis. And what we'll concentrate on in added is then information about the site area and then also all the structures. All these different kinds of information comes from the excavations and also similarly from the surveys being done by the, by the counties. Uh, the data model we use is in the Cydoc CRM. So um, the MUSIT database is already based on the Cydoc CRM. And when we continue to work in the added environment, we will also use the same as it will be an integrated part of the MUSIT database. MUSIT and uh, the SMR system will uh, um, be in contact. It will be a, a common um, APIs. and both of these will then give and receive information used for created through research, cultural heritage management, and also uh, dissemination to bring this out to people. Down on the right here is an example from the um, Riksantikvarns Cultural Heritage Directorate uh, webpage, Askladen. And uh, on the left is um, the page we made to have uh, available um, excavation reports and also artifacts. And in the middle is a page created by a private company. And I think it's very good that the way we make our data available now opens it up so that more people can actually go in, use our data, and uh, make it available online. Unimus.no is the web page for the um, uh, MUSIT cooperation. Uh, we have now the, um, uh, the site for uh, photographies. Now we have passed 750,000 images that are published with the Creative Commons license here. Uh, archaeology, where we have passed 1.4 million artifacts now. Uh, and uh, then also for ethnography, and we have pages for numismatics uh, and uh, also some other variants of, eth of ethnography. Uh, we haven't spent much time on this web page uh, over the last, I think, now 10 years. So it's, um, it could be done a lot more with it, but it's a way of making the, all the material available. So uh, this is from a simple query into the uh, archaeology portal. And uh, uh, here, all our uh, collection is available here. Uh, we have um, converted all the old catalog texts and put it into the database. And also all new acquisitions, everything coming from the excavations, are cataloged directly into this database. And then as soon as the the cataloging is finished, the documentation work from the excavation is finished, then it can be published online here. So it's uh, fairly up to date to give an overview over all that exists. And since this is a cooperation among these five university museums, it's uh, a web page where you can find all the uh, archaeological material in, in Norway. Uh, the, Material is also geo-referenced, and it's possible to make an export 
from this. When I teach DIS, one of the exercises we do is to collect the material from this web page, download it, and uh, create a, a distribution map. Mm, uh, and uh, when you think of how much time one would otherwise spend to create um, distribution maps, this is a, a very good step forward. It's also possible to to get more information about uh, the objects down in the bottom here, the um, uh, original catalog text in the way it was written ori originally, and uh, then some other uh, data about the find and with the photography. And uh, in some cases, we also present this uh, with a map. Um, all of this, uh, of course, the possibility to georeference all this material is very varied. The objects coming in earlier in the 19th century, the data we have is not so precise. Uh, but what we have done is then to use um, a qualitative um, description of the, of the precision of this. And uh, normally when you talk about precision and georeferencing, you will have uh, plus minus a number of meters. But here we are doing it saying that we know the, the farm or we know the precise find where it has been found or perhaps only the parish, the, uh, the county. All this can be read from, uh, uh, from this page so that you can use it in, the, in a good way in the, in the further analysis. Downloading from this page makes it then possible to, to uh, put it together and make uh, maps like this where you have uh, the images from the photo portal and uh, making an aggregation. And uh, here's an example where uh, you can see the number of Stone Age finds divided in, uh, in municipalities. Uh, we have also worked with the uh, um, landscape subregions. It's a categorization of landscapes in Norway that we have found quite useful to combine with archaeological material. And when using the same data set together with this landscape background, we can have a map like this. And it's all, always interesting to see how these aggregations give different um, perceptions of how the archaeological material is distributed. And uh, of course, the, when you make a count within a modern um, area, like, um, like um, a municipality, a county. It has nothing to do with the prehistory, but when you do uh, a count within landscape, it gives another understanding of uh, that is quite interesting. We started in 2004 a project called uh, Open Archaeology uh, to make all the um, um, collections more available because to make it available like we have done through Unimus is a, a first step and a necessary step, but it's not uh, very user friendly. It doesn't, uh, you have to be interested in advance, I guess, to go to the Unimus page and, and look for what you have there. And uh, so the aim of open archeology span was to create other user interfaces and also to work with the school classes, high school classes, and to um, wake an, an interest in archaeology. Uh, we have continued those thoughts in another project called Digital Field Museum, uh, which we started um, about five years ago. And um, the aim of digital, or one main thought in Digital Field Museum is to bring the field, the excavation work, into the museum and to bring the museum out into the fields. And um, uh, we have, on a couple of occasions, uh, had a, a live link between an excavation and uh, school classes um, visiting the museum. And that has been very popular. They, are very, um, they think it's very, very nice when they realize that they are actually online and directly speaking to archaeologists in, in the field. 
And uh, this is a um, project that we will develop further in the uh, coming months and, and hopefully years. So the added um, data will also be used in this um, project. So one of the things we want to do in the, in the added project is to make all the excavation data available and also at a very detailed level. So for those interested, it will be possible to query um, post holes, uh, cooking pits with a certain size, and so on. But we realize that that is probably only for the very specially interested. So it will also be possible to query for houses and, um, in this database. And we will also have one layer on top of this with the data about the uh, excavations so that you can go in and see what excavations have been done and some core data about the excavations. We have started now to also publish all our uh, excavations on the um, uh, science archive at the University of Oslo. Um, and uh, we had uh, now the possibility to uh, continue with this um, slide of the excavations where you get some basic information about the, um, uh, the site. You can go further and ask to see the report, get the abstract, and then you can uh, go further and uh, get the report. Um, we have now published, I think, all reports back to 2004, roughly, and also adding some older reports. And the goal is then, of course, to make all the excavation reports, all the great literature, available in this way. And also our other publications are published uh, on, the, on the same site, the duo.uo.no. Uh, it has also been interesting to see how people have reacted to our publishing all the excavation reports. Uh, people are now coming and uh, asking us when they miss their own reports up on the site. So that's a, a very good uh, development, I think. And uh, also, one talked about earlier today, the importance of making this data, these reports easily available. And it, uh, it's a process that <clears throat> goes on and strengthens it uh, itself because the people writing the reports see the value of being visible on, uh, online. So um, uh, this is then the, um, uh, the uh, infrastructure we uh, have in Norway. It's the old MUSIT cooperation, which dates back now in, since uh, 91, 92. And then the special work on uh, the excavation documentation, the added project that runs now until uh, 2021. And uh, the goal is then, of course, to have a system where all of this can be easily accessed and uh, you should be able to query any part of this system and then have access to the relevant information in the other parts. That the artifact database, the excavation reports, the digital GIS excavation documentation, all the photographs, all the um, photographs from the excavations are, of course, available at the, uh, this uh, photo portal in uh, Unimus, and so that they are all interlinked. We are talking now that we have a lot of linkable data, and the next step will be to turn this into really linked data. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Espen. Uh, does anyone have any, any questions arising from his talk? I think you might be getting off scot-free here, Espen. <laughs> <laughs>